All right, we're going to do some coefficient extraction questions that are slightly more difficult than your typical question. So for the first one, I want to find the coefficient of x to the 15 in 1 plus x to the 4 over 1 minus x to the 4. So the first thing we're going to do is bring everything up to the numerator. So we're going to find the coefficient of x to the 15 of 1 plus x to the power of 4 multiplied by 1 minus x to the power of negative 4. So there's one thing I want to point out here, and that is this 1 plus x to the 4. So the most we can get out of this is x to the 4. However, we could also get x to the 0, x to the 1, x to the 2, or x to the 3. So we have these five different possibilities for how many x's we can take out of that first term, but we're limited to x to the 4. So we're going to have five cases here. And they're going to be five different cases. We're going to have to add them all together. So in the first case, we can choose zero of the x's. In our second case, we're going to choose one out of the four. Um, we're going to choose two out of the four. We can choose three out of the four. And then we can choose four out of the four. I'm leaving space for the rest of the terms. OK, so what happens now? Well, the rest of our x's we're going to get from this 1 minus x raised to the negative 4. So we'll do this one in light pink. OK, so if we choose 0 out of the x's from our 1 plus x to the 4, this means we have to get 15 of our x's from this 1 minus x to the negative 4. And if we use the extended binomial theorem here, this is going to be the same thing as negative 4 choose 15 multiplied by negative 1 to the power of 15. OK. So if we choose 1x from our 1 plus x to the 4, then we need to choose 14x's from our 1 minus x to the negative 4. So this is going to be negative 4 choose 14 times negative 1 to the 14. OK, we're just going to continue this. So 4 choose 2, well, this means you have to get 13x's from our negative 4. So we're going to have negative 4 choose 13 times negative 1 to the 13. 4 choose 3, well, we're going to have negative 4 choose 12 x's remaining times negative 1 to the 12. And if we take 4 x's from our 1 plus x to the 4, we need x to the 11 left. So that's going to be negative 4 choose 11 times negative 1 to the 11. So at this point, we could leave this done, or we can simplify a bit. So 4 choose 0 is just 1, so we'll get rid of that. But negative 4 choose 15, well, this is the same thing as 4 plus 15 minus 1 choose 15, which simplifies to 18. So this is going to be 18 choose 15. And this is also going to be times negative 1 to the 15. So that was just expanding this negative 4 choose 15. But we still have this other negative 1 to the 15 here. So those negative 1s are going to cancel, and this term is going to be positive. OK? So then we're going to add 4 choose 1. Negative 4 choose 14 is going to simplify to 17 choose 14. And again, we're also going to pull out a negative 1 to the 14, and those will cancel again. So we're just going to repeat this to simplify. So now we have 4 choose 2 times 16 choose 13 plus 4 choose 3 times 15 choose 12. And then our last one is going to be 4 choose 4, which is 1. And that'll be multiplied by... 14 choose 11. So that is the solution to the first problem here. So uh, this is probably your first step into the more advanced coefficient extraction questions. And it's nice because we have this 1 plus x at the top, which means we don't have to worry about our positives and negatives. In this next question, however, we will. So I want to find the 83rd power, so the coefficient of x to the 83 and x5 plus x8 plus x11 all the way up to x17 raised to the power of 10. So the first thing I want to do is I want to extract x to the 5 from each of our sets here. So we're going to have x to the 5 in the first one, x to the 5 in the second one. So we're going to pull x to the 5 out 10 times. So essentially we want to find the coefficient of x to the 83 of x to the 50 so this is like taking x to the 5 out 10 times. And then what's left is going to be 1 plus x cubed plus x6 
plus x9 plus x to the 12. Is that where we stop? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes. That's all raised to the power of 10. So because we have an x to the 50 pulled out, we can just shift our equation over. So this is like finding the coefficient of x to the 33 of 1 plus x cubed plus x to the 6 plus x to the 9th plus x to the 12th, all raised to the power of 10. So at this point, we want to turn this into a generating function. So we're going to find the coefficient of x to the 33. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we're going up in powers of 3 here, so it's going to be over 1 minus x cubed raised to the power of 10, and it stops at x to the 12. So this is going to be 1 minus, and we want to stop 1 set of powers above. So we're going x9, x12, so the next one would be x15, so we take 1 minus x to the 15, all raised to the power of 10. If you want a more detailed explanation, go to the lecture video. Okay, so at this point, uh, we continue as we did in the last problem. So I want to raise everything to be a numerator, so this is going to be the 33rd power coefficient of 1 minus x third to the negative 10, multiplied by 1 minus x15 to the 10. Okay, so here is where things get a little bit more complicated. So now in my binomial expansion of 1 minus x to the 15 raised to the 10, I have this negative sign. So we're going to have to alternate positives and negatives now. We're also working in powers of 3 and powers of 15. So there's different ways I can do this. I can take x to the 0 out of this 1 minus x to the 15. I can take x to the 15 out, or I can take x to the 30 out. Anything after that is pointless because we're only looking for x to the 33. In the first set here, 1 minus x cubed, I can take out x to the 0, x to the 3, x to the 6, so on and so forth. So for the first step here, or the first case, I'm going to choose 0 out of 1 minus x to the 15. So right here, we're going to have 10 choose 0 of these 1 minus x to the 15s. And then that means that if we want to get to 33, we have to choose 11 out of our 1 minus x cubed. So this is going to be negative 10 choose 11. And this will be negative 1 to the power of 11. OK, so that's the first case. The second case, well, we can choose 1 out of our x15. So this could be 10 choose 1, which means, well, first of all, let's not be too quick here. We're choosing 1 negative x to the 15. So this is multiplied by negative 1. OK, so we've got to remember to do this. Otherwise, we're going to get an incorrect answer at the end. So we chose an x15, which means we have x to the 18 to make up. So this means that we're going to choose 6 from our 1 minus x cubed, because this will be x15 here, and then we'll get our remaining x to the 18 from this negative 10 choose 6. OK, and once again, that'll be multiplied by negative 1 to the power of 6. And then we have to add, well, our last case is we choose 2 here. And we're choosing 2, so we're going to have negative x times negative x, which is positive, so we can ignore that. And we have x to the 30 from our 10 choose 2, so we're left with x to the 3 remaining. So we're going to choose 1 from negative 10, and again, that's multiplied by negative 1 to the power of 1. Okay, so we could be done here, but of course we can always simplify. 10 choose 0 is 1, negative 10 choose 11 is going to be 20 choose 11 times negative 1 to the power of 11, these will cancel out, so that'll remain positive. Then we're going to subtract, because we have this negative 1 here, 10 choose 1, so that's going to be 10, times, well, negative 10 choose 6 is just 15 choose 6, and we're also going to get a negative 1 from that, and then the negative 1 will cancel with this negative 1 to the 6. Okay, then we have to add, well, 10 choose 2, that's going to be 45, and negative 10 choose 1 is just going to be 10 choose 1, which is 10. It's going to be plus 450. And then our negative 1s will cancel. So this is going to be our final result. 
And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. These are definitely some of the hardest questions you can do in a Discrete Math 2 course that are just computation. So if you're looking for a difficult computation question, this is probably the hardest you're going to get. So uh, if you do struggle with these, please let me know and I can make more videos on coefficient extraction because these are tough. So questions below, comment, and uh, hopefully these will be a little bit easier for you now.